up guys? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. I welcome you to come into these tarot readings with an open heart, an open mind, and a desire to better yourself. This is optional advice or guidance meant to motivate you, empower you, inspire you, uh, and offer you confirmations on things that you are already thinking and feeling and sensing. If you don't resonate with the material that comes through, please push those messages aside. They may resonate for you at a later date, and they may not. Have faith it's going out to someone who needs to hear it, even if it is not you. Use your logic, your discretion, your discernment. Separate what is meant for you and what is not. Uh, I come at this with love and positivity, so please take that away here today. You are responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Let's try and have some fun uh, to get you some insightful messages. Check out that box below for the decks I use, how to contact me for a personal, as well as my social media links. Welcome to the tea party. Let's read your tarot cards. What's up, Scorpio? Welcome to your December monthly tarot reading. Let's do it. We're going to hop right in with a music oracle card. This deck is new and I love it for Scorpio. Hope you guys had a good birthday. Oh, you got two, you little sneaky sneaks. All right, whatever, we'll do it. Nostalgia is for two-time losers. <laughs> Don't mistake that mansion on the hill for paradise. Darkness may be falling, but we're not there yet. Who said that? Mr. Dylan. So I'm, I'm pulling a, a music oracle card, so I'm hoping this means something to you or it will eventually. I'm kind of, I'm not basing your reading off of it, just it's a fun way to kick off your reading, right? Happy December. And then you also got Miss Streisand, <laughs> and a very interesting dynamic there, Streisand and Dylan. Fake it till you make it. It's easy to fool yourself, but hard to fool an audience. If you can't go right to the top, find somewhere else to go. I... All right, Scorpio. So let's let's channel some Streisand and Dylan, I guess. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> let's talk about your love life. Love first, and then we will do messages of career and finances. They will be timestamped down below if you want to hop right to them. So here we go. Reading intuitively. Let's do it for Scorpio. Tell me about their love life. Let's get them some solid messages, please. Solid messages and love. Okay, you got a whole pile that fell out. All right, judgment. Sagittarius had this card, actually. So frequently returning to the past to close something out with completion, with harmony. If something's been weighing on your mind or your heart, let's see. Is it a reunion or is it putting something to bed once and for all? The thing is, I think you've been getting messages from this person already. And so I don't know if you've been avoiding it or, or contemplating if you want to pursue something with this person. But it feels like there's a lot of messages coming at you. I don't know if they're all from the same person. More than certainly, some of them are coming from someone from your past. It could be that you're already in a relationship, but someone from your past comes knocking and you're like, wait a minute, what? I got my hands full. I'm using friends tarot, you guys. Oh, stop it. Four of Wands. All right. I, yeah, see, here's the thing. I think this is saying you already have a solid foundation with someone. Uh, again, this message isn't for everybody. It might not be your story. I hope it is, though. Why wouldn't you want this to be your story, right? You, you have the soulmate card, right? Four of Wands. This is, I mean, this is a pretty good dynamic, right? And just the mere fact that I, mean, I have to take into consideration it's being shown with Ross and Rachel. So this could be an on-again, off-again situation, right? Still, though, I think there's someone else coming into this. Yeah, because it's like you're in a new cycle. But the thing is, Scorpio, I really want to underscore this. There's something about this saying, I'm good. Back off. Like, I don't I don't want to revisit this something from my past because there's a reason it didn't work out and things seem to be going great for me. And I almost feel like you're aggravated or you're frustrated that, like, I finally found a person and like, who is this person from my past like impeding on this? It's like, I'm happy. Why? Like, in a sense, here's what here's what this feels like to me, Scorp. And again, for those who resonate, this feels like you finally found someone and you're like, oh my God, this is great. Like, dare I say, again, I'm not trying to oversell this, but like this almost feels like I've never experienced love like this before. This feels like there's reciprocity. This person genuinely cares about me. At one point in time, you didn't value yourself in relationships the way you do now. So this is probably a partner who you, with certainty, were meant to meet because you learned a karmic lesson from them. But once you kind of did the work in Scorpio season, right, you stood in your power, when this person comes knocking back, your reaction to it is to, uh, like distance, separate, because you're not the same person you were when you first met them. Universe basically made a deal with you. It's like you guys made a pact. It's like, Scorpio, if you raise your vibration, I'll give you something good, but you have to do the work. I see this as a lot of my Scorpios chose to do the work. And again, I don't mean to say superficially reinvented yourself, but no, you understood a part of you that 
it, it was just kind of a corroding. It was, it was like rotting. It was eating away at you because, again, it had to do with a false perception of who you were. I think a lot of you stepped into your power and, you know, magically, you know, when you decide that you are lovable and you're amazing, other people tend to notice that, too. It's when you weren't feeling that way that you, I'm almost getting like the way uh, uh, f fruit flies are attracted to like rotting fruit. It's, it's like the idea of it smells good, like perfume, cologne, that kind of things. It smells good, but it was something to feed on because it was sweet and quick and then they could fly away. So you may have been dealing with a player who actually ended up catching feelings for you. But even so, though, at the time, that person didn't treat you right. And I think a lot of you had to make a head over heart decision of I like you, but this isn't healthy for me. And when you do, spirit's like, oh, you want someone healthy? Here you go. Like, here's the real one. So that's why I'm getting this interesting storyline of you seem head over heels for someone. And again, I'm not trying to inflate the idea of this. I'm reading this very practically from what I'm seeing in the cards. This feels real good to me. I'm just going to say it. So if you're not there yet, keep doing the work because you're, what this is saying is no matter what situation you're in, if you keep pushing forward and valuing yourself in in relationships, right, standing grounded and standing on your own two feet, you're going to have options of the past person, sorry, past person and the new person. And for a lot of you, the new person blows this one out of the water. And the thing is, I feel you watching this right now, Scorpio, going, no, 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 I want my old person back careful be careful what you wish for because again that to me is such a a limited perspective of the options out there available to you and i'm not trying to shit on the person of the past but i just i guess i'm asking you scorpio you know for you to answer for yourself why why did it have to separate what broke it apart was it truly toxic? Was it truly unhealthy? Or was it just circumstance, right? And it will be different. For some of you, maybe it was circumstances, you know, your life paths led you in two different directions. Again, I'm still saying I feel like it was divine. Yeah, thank you. I feel like it was divine timing. I feel like it was fated that you were meant to push through this difficult situation with, with a former partner to lead you, to align you to the right path, right? And I, I want to mention this, guys. I'm a firm believer in that there is no right person. There is no one person for you. You know, if that's your belief, that's fine. I'm not here to change that. But there's so many people out in the world to, again, marry ourselves to this is the one and this is the one. I know it. I would, I don't know. I would question the intention behind that. I think there's a lot of people out there you could argue are soulmates. And whether or not they're your long-term marriage, grandkids, babies, you know, that person, they still offer you something and ultimately to learn about yourself and your relationship. So all I'm saying here is no matter what you choose to do with this, because ultimately it is your choice, keep an open mind. Because I think some of you are in that transitional stage where you're not with the ex, but you're like, well, where's the soulmate? Where is this one you're telling me about? Have you done the work? <laughs> Have you done the work on yourself too? I, I hate to say you deserve the soulmate, but ultimately put your best foot forward and the universe will match you, right? They Again, it's like, I want a healthy relationship. Oh, we'll just say that. Here you go, right? But again, internally, make sure that you're not self-sabotaging, right? Make sure you're practicing healthy behaviors and healthy habits. I do sense that for a lot of you, this person of the past, it wasn't the right timing. I keep hearing that. There was something about you You met at a point where it's almost like, what is that? There was like a ricochet where you guys were meant to meet and then s separate, but there was something about the impact of you guys meeting or, or the, I, I, I just keep getting like there was a ricochet, like a bounce back of, it's like universe orchestrated it so you two met and then went other ways. Because th that is like something about that was the only way to, to get you to go off and do that thing by making something, I don't know if it was a tower moment, but something significant where it would force you in a new direction. What What is that metaphor I'm getting? There's like a bounce back. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm seeing hockey pucks. All right. So again, metaphors, but hey, if you're a hockey player, you know, sure, more confirmation. The idea of when you, you know, you, or whatever, whatever sport you want to say, right? You, you slide the hockey puck across the ice and it doesn't hit the net. It hits like, what do you call it? Like the outside rim of it, right? And it hits the plastic part and it goes back. It was to get you to shoot, shoot again, to shoot higher, to aim better, right? Like I could put it in the net. We could sink this and do it. But what if it wasn't a person who in the long term was going to serve you and your emotional needs? It feels like, it almost feels like universe say it at like you know the goalie saving it but then tossing it back like, no that like that was that was the wrong shot you know the angle was off try it again but do it better like <laughs> take a minute collect yourself gather your thoughts 
and then take the shot again because let's make it count this time. Let's let's do it for real. Scorpio, I'm digging this message. I hope you guys are still with me. <clears throat> yeah, because ultimately this whole uh, not the timing wasn't just right. Let's let's try again at another point. Somewhere in there, you sort of graduated into your role as the magician of the the manifester of your own destiny, right? Not pushing off that responsibility or accountability to someone else, making decisions solely for you. And in your love life, that is appropriate. It's not your brother. It's not your mother. It's not your best friend chiming in on what you should be looking for. This is like, what do you want? You know, she literally looks like she's kind of taking aim. So again, you can use any sports metaphor. I don't know if it's a baseball bat or, a, you know, a golf putter or whatever it is. It's like we took a shot and like it almost went in, but it's, you know, it like circled around the rim and came back. It, it was something about do it again. I'm actually now I'm seeing batting cages. Do I have a lot of Scorpio athletes out there? Let me know if that makes sense to any of you or maybe your person was. Maybe you played on a sports league together. I don't know. <laughs> Me, of all people, giving metaphors about sports, like, I'm so out of my territory here. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, literally, aim a little higher. Keep, shoot, shoot for the stars, shoot a little higher, because that's where your real nine of cups is. I'm not saying this person in your past couldn't potentially fit the bill, but again, I'm questioning why you're questioning if you've already met this new person, they seem high high and above the rest. Or or in comparison, there's something so, dare I say, so right about this person. I sound kind of cheesy reading right now. I don't know what the deal is there, but. The Eight of Pentacles. So what's the deal? Tell me about why is Scorpio like... Because, again, it's different. Some of you haven't met person B, you know, the, 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 essentially the one that I think will treat you better or there's more compatibility. That's just how I see person B. Person A, judgment says to me it was it was definitely a past. It was definitely a karmic. And that give me a little, it's like, give me a little baggage. No, give me a little details. Give me a little basic profile on each year with my, with my oracles. Give me two things about this person of the past and two about the future, please, or whoever the current person is. Journal. There may have been a sad goodbye letter or a, a sad exchange of email. It was very heavy hearted. Uh, or, uh, yeah, text messages going back and forth, but it, it was dead in the water. It was, it was like uh, somebody or both of you didn't want to acknowledge that it, it, it became lifeless or it couldn't maintain its health. It couldn't support itself. Something about a fish tank, it... it I know, I don't know what this is. Maybe you're dealing with a Pisces, but something about the purification of the water filter. It's like somebody let it go too much. And again, this is a metaphor, of course, but like the fish died because there wasn't enough clarity. There wasn't enough. It's like there was muck and stuff growing in what was supposed to be this pure, fresh, beautiful water, aka love relationship, right? And it's like the fish were floundering. They were, again, this is a harsh metaphor, but metaphors, guys. It's like they were gulping or uh, what do you call that? Gasping for breath. They were like suffocating. And it's like somebody had to put an end to it, even though I, I don't know if I want to say bittersweet, but at the time it was a very hard ending. So again, maybe you have a lot of perspective. Maybe you, uh, quite literally in this card, you have the upper hand, the, uh, the higher perspective on what, what transpired in the past where you don't look at it in the same way anymore, where you used to be very, you know, sentimental and, you know, this person tugs at my heartstrings and I shouldn't be with them when I want to be with them. Some of you don't feel that way anymore. And so it's just reminding you of where you used to be if at one point in time this was, this was my fish, <laughs> to use a friend's metaphor, right? This was my lobster or something. Again, it could have been with a Pisces. Uh, someone in the scenario may have been professionally a writer or working on some sort of writing project or writing endeavor. Some of you may have ended up writing or being feeling inspired to write self-help books because of something you went through in your past or because of something your person went through. You may have became an uh, yeah an advocate for some sort of cause, whether it was a uh, mental health or anxiety or depression or something about coping skills and techniques. You may have actually it's almost like that could have been one of the reasons you interacted with that person. Anyway, yeah, it, it, it had to end. It just, it had to end. That's what I get through there. But again, I, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of communication back and forth, but it was very heavy hearted. It was like, I don't want this to end, but I don't think I can do it anymore. So tell me about new person. Ooh, as I flipped it over. Interesting. They're a snake charmer. <laughs> There's almost like, are they too good to be true? 
is am, is what I'm seeing here real or is this an illusion? Like it, I'm almost getting, okay, this makes so much sense to me. I'm almost getting, are you a bullshit artist? And that's like a double entendre message because I, I have a really good sense of humor about this guy's like tarot is a tool for self-empowerment. It is not the only tool. My, I am not the voice of God. I am not the voice of your density. I am a person sitting in my room with my computer on reading your tarot cards. Let's acknowledge that. As I'm reading this, literally, I can feel this like energy of you guys going, person of the past, me single, but here's this tarot reader, this bullshit artist telling me about my future soulmate. Like, where is it? I don't see him anywhere. I, it's almost like you guys are questioning me and the tarot reading. And again, that's fine. You should be questioning this, right? If it's not fitting, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> I'm saying use your common sense and judgment, but there, I, I'm sorry. I think that's hilarious because there's multiple metaphors of when something seems really good, you may have this self sabotage thing going on, whether it's directed at me or your future uh, suitor, I'm going to say your romantic suitor, where your defenses are up and you're like, I feel like you're lying to me. Like, I like what I'm hearing, but I also like, it's not true. That's not my truth. That's not my story. That will never be my story. Well, Again, I'm, I'm not offended if you don't resonate with this story, but at the same time, why wouldn't you hear this story and get intrigued by, oh, okay, well, maybe I should put myself out there because universe, whatever, the tarot reader on YouTube is saying, there actually is someone out there for me. You bet your ass there is. <laughs> like, yes, Scorpio. So again, I, I'm laughing because I, I am trying to make light of this, but I understand some of you are defensive to even hearing anybody, whether it's me or 9,000 other tarot readers out there telling you, no, there is someone else out there who's very compatible that will treat you right. And you're just like, where? I don't see them. Maybe you're not looking hard enough, Scorpio. Ooh, that one burned a little. That one stung a little. That one stung a little. All right, Tom, this is cute, though. They're kind of a puppy dog. <laughs> That's sort of what I'm getting. Like, they're too nice. Is that what it is, Scorpio? Are they too nice? Are they too good to you? Maybe it's like, again, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe you're into like the whole bad boy, bad girl image, but is that healthy? Has that decision worked for you in the past? If you have a, again, I, I say this to Capricorn literally all the time. If you're like, I only date men who are, you know, five, I don't know, ex, you know, <laughs> six feet tall, dark, handsome, have a good job, this and that, like, Sure, basic requirements are good. You need to be able to give them the details a little bit. And for some of you, you reject people who are too nice. Sorry, Scorp, the truth hurts. And that that's why you might be suspicious of this, because again, it seems too good to be true. And like, I can't read tarot cards and not be authentic to who I am. Like, I, I have Scorpio in my chart, right? We are the detect. I say we. I'm not a sun Scorpio, but I have Scorpio moon. I have tons of planets in my... um in my Scorpio in my chart. Anyway, we auth authenticity and integrity is so crucial and important and loyalty. And so like, if I'm giving you my client a reading, I can't tell you, oh, it's going to be beautiful and magical and this and that because I literally couldn't wake up and look at myself in the morning and have a clean conscience. I'm telling you this because I think some of you need to hear it. You have settled for, for people who, who diminish your value and you're so stuck in this headspace of what you truly deserve that it, it's like every time a new option comes along that could be a really good fit, you immediately become overly suspicious. And I almost think you look for reasons why this isn't going to work versus all the things, all the positive things it does bring you. Just take it with a grain of salt, Scorp. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't don't self sabotage. Don't shoot this down before you truly examine what's underneath. By all means, examine it. Dig deeper. That's what you do. You're Scorpio. But I almost think you go in with this mentality of I'm gonna find what's wrong with it when that is such a fucked up perspective to have. You need to go in being like, what can I learn about this, right? And again, you can be neutral. It's, I'm not saying you have to look for all and glamorize and gloss over all the negatives to find the. Because again, I think that gets you in trouble too, only it's like you're projecting the negative onto the good one. You're projecting the rose-tinted glasses onto the one where, I just keep getting this metaphor, it's like a fish gasping for breath. It was exhausting. It was something where it's like you weren't getting your general requirements to live. Like I'm, I'm always getting nutrients, what's good for your health and what's for your body. It, there wasn't enough oxygen. You couldn't thrive. It's like the waters had been muddied. I think you put up with a lot and by default it, it just it, it left you feeling exhausted and still not getting what you want. So rightfully so. Some of you are just like, I, I am exhausted. I don't want to have to do this whole, I think uh, 
Scorp, I'm struggling with this because I feel such a pessimistic vibe. And I know it's not all of you guys, but I do think that that's sort of just an important message to vouch for is you have to raise your vibration. If you truly want to find a counterpart where if it's from your past or from the future, you kind of got to flip your attitude a little bit. Sorry, guys. I, I know that's a hard, hard pill to swallow, but... I guess I'm frustrated for you because this seems like it could be really good. It, you know, depending on what you're looking for, this could, this could be, you know, marriage and buying the house and having having the dog and, you know, raising kids together. But I'm it's like you immediately jump to, huh, this is fishy. You know what's fishy? This. This person from the past who didn't treat you right, all of a sudden is like, bah, 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 Scorpio, it's me. I'm back again. <laughs> like, All right, moving on. <laughs> Moving on, reach higher, aim higher, especially if consistently you feel lackluster and disappointment in the partners you've chosen. Again, take responsibility, ownership, accountability. You have manifested them in some way. You have manifested them to teach you a lesson, right? And and again, accountability. Ultimately, you did choose them, so it may have, you know, you may have gotten burned. And I'm not saying it was your fault, but essentially, Raise your vibration, mercury energy. What is the information that you learned from that? And then how can you use that information and, and use it in like a new cycle? Oh, Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. It's uncomfortable. Are you guys uncomfortable? I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Tell me about old and new, please. What is it? Is there any redeeming quality in this old one? Actually, I'm going to ask that with tarot cards before I hop in. Yeah. Someone from the past is trying to make amends with you. But they're still a little bit immature. Ace of Cups, Page of Wands. They're they're still immature. They're not a king. They're not a queen. They're not even a knight. Um, this could even be someone you already had children with. You may have been married to them at one point. You know, maybe they're trying to... I don't know if it's necessarily flirting. It could be offering an, an apology of some kind. But it, again, I don't hate it. But I think you can do better. If I'm being completely honest, this person is wearing sunglasses, right? What are they trying to hide? Look me in the eyes. Like, again, that's the illusion. Like, look me in the eyes. Let me see the truth behind it, the integrity. Snake eyes. <laughs> Snake. This may, in your future, you may actually manifest another Scorpio. And what's going to challenge this relationship is that you both have to, sh in metaphor, shed the skin of everything that's held you back. And again, past, past relationships and, and emerge, you know, phoenix from the ashes, where it's like you both have equal suspicions about each other and the universe is saying, they're a puppy dog. They're cute. They're making romantic offers. I just keep hearing sabotage, self-sabotage. Don't do that, Scorpio. Knight of coins. Absolutely. At least we're getting into knight territory. Knight of coins. What he offers is real. He can reach out and touch it. He's not going to. He can reach out and touch it, Scorpio. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what he offers you is legit. It's tangible. He doesn't just promise you the sun and the moon and the stars and not deliver. What he says he can offer is what he can offer, and he'll show it to you. Don't tell me your plan. Show me your results. He will do that. He or she. It could be a girl. You may even go, I, I, and I'm not saying you have to. I'm a tarot reader who believes in free will. This new person, there's a lot of things that could happen here. You know, because this old person, this old flame who, I don't know, you guys seem tempted to pursue it with. So whatever, you're going to choose to do what you want to do. You may choose to end it with this new person who has soulmate potential and walk away. But even if that's the case, this person is still going to hold out for you. A lot of you. And I'm not, I mean, I would say treat this person well. You know, if you're going to end it with them, okay, fine. Don't burn any bridges though, because you may just find out that if you up and leave this one to go pursue the one in the past, you might still get burned a second time in the past, in which case you're going to be like, shit, why did I let go of what I had with the Knight of Pentacles? And I say that because you have eight of cups. I think there's a temptation to walk away from this because it seems too good to be true. And this is to me, time will tell. It's earth energy. It's you might not know instantly. You know, do you believe in love at first sight? I don't even know if I do, to be honest. I'm not sure if I believe in that anymore. However, I, I do believe that we have soulmates and partners out there for us. So because it's presenting with earth, I think the attraction, the, especially the sexual attraction, I think there's crushy romance easily, right, with this. The, the attraction in terms of this, uh, is this a long-term commitment or a long-term partnership? I think that will grow over time, but 
I don't know. I see some sort of halt where this gets off and running and then it plateaus or it's stagnant, but it may have to do with distance. Some one of you may have to go off in a different direction. It, maybe it's for work and, and more than likely it's emotional distance. You may be in it with this person and then you get a knocking on the door from the past in metaphor, right? A call, a text. And all of a sudden you go cold on them and they're like, what's with this emotional distance? Like we, we had a great time and all of a sudden Scorpio is kind of like something changed. Your person isn't dumb. I'm going to tell you that much. <clears throat> this is the main story, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. Your wheel of fortune, you manifested the love you deserve, and I, I don't know if you guys are ready to receive it. I mean, spirit thinks you are. It wouldn't be here, but the wolf. Yeah, the wolf is on the prowl because he wants you back. He or she could be a water sign from your past, a fire sign from your past. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, Aries, Leo, Sag. There's trust issues. Unfortunately, it seems like some of my Scorpios got into a relationship where they really lost a sense of being able to put trust and faith, not only in themselves, not only in their partner, but in the universe. The universe matches your vibe. So if you truly want love and romance of a lifetime, you need to start believing it's out there and also that you guys deserve it. I think this is a, about... Uh, Again, it first came out and I was, I, I did the same thing you guys did. Like, oh, crocodile, what's that? This to me, it's, it's just not that message because this, this is what the new person is. This to me, it, there's something about ready and waiting, waiting to pounce on the opportunity. I, that's what I said. I think if you, <laughs> I love using this. If you eight of cups, this person's ass, your knight of coins, who I really like, by the way. Four of Pentacles is like, they're still going to hold on to you. They're ready and waiting for if you do decide to run back to them, they're going to be like, okay, I'm ready for my opportunity, which I don't know. Like, dare I say, it seems kind of mean to, to leave someone and knowing. But here's the thing, though. Ultimately, this is about you. And so you may have to sacrifice that momentarily. But I do think when you walk away from this person, you're actually going to realize in time how good they were for you, especially if they were willing to wait, right? I think if it's going to give you peace of mind to revisit this thing from the past and make sure it truly is like a, a tapped resource, a tapped well. You know, maybe some of you will be surprised. Maybe this person has changed a lot and they have a cup of overflowing love and abundance and they're ready to do it with you. But gosh, you are at a crossroads though, aren't you? Because you, you seem to have at least one, if not two, uh, um, things that you're willing to entertain. Peacock. Peacocking. This per yeah, the person is a little bit immature. Uh, the person from your past, a little bit showy or show-offy. And be careful that someone isn't trying to buy back your love with material possessions. Um, that's really important. Again, this idea of peacocking, putting on a show, you know, I may have been hearing ruffling your feathers, though, because that's the thing, like, it, it's intriguing, but it also kind of agitates you. I don't know, Scorpio. Make sure there's authenticity behind it. Yeah, truth, almost like godliness to the offer, that what they're, what they're offering you is something of great value, so they don't just give it to anyone. It's like they set the intention, like, my heart is for Scorpio. And again, they're guarding it. I actually think this even has, and I don't mean to make this creepy or weird, hear me out. This person over here almost has this, dare I say, sibling-like dynamic to them. Like, they love you so much that they're willing to let you go and discover that other thing. But I'm almost getting like, if you fucking hurt my Scorpio, like, like they're so protective of you. There's something about the alligator. They're ready to pounce, but it's not just, it's not with anger or aggression towards you. I don't know. I'm almost thinking this could be like one of, like if you had an older brother or younger brother, it's like, it could be your brother's sibling or I'm sorry, your brother's best friend and you ended up dating them and they're actually like your soulmate. It could be something like that. Like you guys seem to have, if it's not a history together, there's a familiarity that just, it, it just works, right? And there's something about, I think this person loves you so much. They're always kind of going to be holding out for you, which God bless them. But also, there's this attitude of they're going to be watching your every move, not in a creepy way. It's because they want to make sure you don't get hurt again. Scorpio, I kind of like this message. All right. Shoot for the stars. Don't settle for small potatoes. Um, I'm not really getting much else on your other person. You have wolf and crocodile, so I'll show them to you. I don't know. Water signs, fire signs. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this, but hopefully you do. 
Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about career and finances. Oh, no. Cards just fell off the table. I feel like we have to read them. I'll be back in 10 minutes when I go get them. <laughs> Ooh, Wheel of Fortune and Three of Pentacles. Yeah, let's talk about money. What are you building that is bound to be successful? I actually kind of wanted to throw ro Romance Angels on that, but I feel like the time has passed. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture and reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. Shocker. I think we just read for those two scenarios, didn't we? All right. What's under the reconciliation? Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. Wah, wah. Now, once under the express your love, retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. Again, maybe traveling with your person. There may be a circumstance where travel is unavoidable and you can either stay or go with them. I think a lot of you may end up being like, well, I guess we're traveling together. Maybe for the holidays. Religious factors. Boringest card in the deck. Okay, moving on. Let's say, actually, let's talk about career and finances. Scorpio. Doing okay. If I can make these under 40 minutes, that's my goal. It's not going to happen, but all right. Hey, you guys to be building a, a, an enterprise, building a, a, an empire, building, you're building something, then you're breaking out your toolkit. <clears throat> this is like the same message. This is like you stumble into good fortune, you start to build, and then the soulmate from the past comes back. <laughs> All right, give me one outcome, and then we're switching scripts. Why do you, like, what, what is the deal here? The high priestess, the intuition, you already know. It's your, yeah, it's your wands person. They're ten of wands. It's like, they're blocked off. It's going to be more of a burden in the long term for a lot of you. Again, this isn't everybody's story, but generally speaking, your intuition, your gut reaction, if you hear from someone from your past, your gut reaction is the truth of the matter. So if it's positive or negative, you know, again, it's probably worth pursuing a little bit, but they might still be a player, Knight of Wands energy, or it's saying they're they're a knight, they're still kind of in transit and figuring their life out, but with that, they may come with a lot of baggage still. There may be things that I'm sort of getting are unforgivable, even if you still really love this person, if, if you choose to entertain this person, I'm seeing ladders here, like shoots and ladders. It's like, okay, I'm going to make the effort to climb all the way to the top. And then they're just, they're going to send me packing later. I don't know. I don't know. Can I translate that into career? Climbing the ladder, climbing the corporate ladder. If you're collabing with a Cancer or a Pisces, that actually looks really positive in terms of your career. Yeah, you guys could do something together. There, were, there could be a really artistic collaboration. Um... <clears throat> Something involving costuming, uh, sp specifically something about belts or, um, gosh, I don't even know what that is. Something leathery. I don't know if you're just le like leather jackets or some something with leather. <laughs> the leather man. All right. I don't know what to do with that. Moving on. All right. Career. Let's set the intention. Career messages. Ooh. <laughs> the minute we set the intentions, they come out. Oh my God. Enough with the lover reading. Scorpio, you're killing me. I'm not going to read this as, as romance. I'm just not. But if it makes sense for you, go ahead. Okay. So let's see. There's wanting someone wanting to welcome you into the company or welcome you into the partnership, the business, but you're distracted. You're looking elsewhere. There's someone in uh, who has major influence and power, and they see uh, like a really great connection with you, but you're like, mm, like I'll just show you. You're looking the other way. You're in assessment mode, so I mean, you might be thinking about it, but you're you're in no rush to give them any implication on what what you're leaning towards. You're because you seem to be in the in the power to make a decision. The longer you wait, the more, I don't want to say infuriating, but this person finds it annoying. So if for some reason this is like your boss or the recruiter or somebody looking to hire you, I'm not saying you need to rush the choice, but also don't sabotage or self-sabotage. It's something like, I don't know why something about this may require a fairly quick communication. And I mean, it's not make or break. If your heart isn't in it, that's fine. But it's almost like they have someone lined up next. So if you don't respond within the next, whatever it is, you know, a couple days or a couple weeks, they're like, all right, well, Scorpio went dark on us. So let's give it to Gemini. It, it could be something like that. This could even be like a co-chair position, or I'm getting it's something fairly high up, executive or something where you would be co-counsel or there would be two people in charge it's like you are the scorpio this person really wants you on board and you may even be in higher power than they are the king to the queen of course it's not about gender it's it's just quite frankly what the court cards are 
Um, in fact, they're both female anyway, so there you go. Um, yeah, it, it's like this person is trying to welcome in Scorpio to, to join the team, but there's something there. You're kind of a nut. Uh, Here's the thing, you don't annoy them, but your lack of response or they may start to view you as kind of flaky when it's like this is just a very important decision and it's going to take time. So sure, absolutely tell them that though so that there isn't like, you know, I think I made Scorpio an amazing offer and, and they just went dark on me. Like there's, uh, I don't know, I, I do kind of like this and it, it's like they, they would prefer you over the others. <sighs> You are set free for a reason. Does that make sense to any of you? <clears throat> Again, these this message will not stray away from everything I've already told you. There's so much about judgment and returning to the past and not burning bridges. But ultimately, why did that happen? So you could start over fresh on your own, right? Like no strings attached. And seeing flags, something with a Sagittarius, they had something about a flag come into their um, reading too. So I don't, I don't know if you're joining the military or I don't know what, something about flags or you're making banners and flags and advertisements. I don't know what that is. You're still, uh, let me just take a deep breath. Scorpio, you're putting me through the ringer here. I love reading for Scorpio. I just feel like these messages are kind of, they're kind of rough. I gotta be honest. I, anyway, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I don't know. They're not bad. It's just what whatever you're thinking of that is delaying your movement forward with this Queen of Swords, the one who's very excited to recruit Scorpio. They want Scorpio. They've decided with absolute clarity, Scorpio fits the bill. Scorpio's the one. You're like, well, it's a pretty heavy decision. And maybe it has to do with leaving a partner behind, right? Uh, maybe it has to do with moving to the city of, of this business or this job title or, or this client, right? I don't know how long term it is. Are you ready to sever it off with, with the person you already had a tower moment with? I, I, that's the thing. Like, I kind of, this is typically my single lady, single man's card. Certainly doesn't have to be. But it's like a, a very important decision regarding your trajectory or your career path needs to be made here. Again, very good power, money, career cards are happening over here. But what you're looking at, what you're possibly distracted by is something revisiting from the past only what is it it's a tower moment so it's something from the past that has already ended or it's essentially saying jump from the building like save yourself like this is a hot mess um it, it, it double cards of kind of scorpio energy mars energy you know pluto type ultimately transformational energy like this this structure has to come crumbling down so we can build it properly this time so here's the thing this could even be a startup that started to fail and it's saying, well, it, it was doomed to, it was, it was doomed in that it could never succeed at the timeline you started it. Or again, the unstable ground that you and your, your partner went in on. It's not to say it couldn't ever succeed, but this is going to require a lot of work. Damage repair is sort of, in fact, you, you, it could even be some like a business front property that was vandalized or like windows were smashed in or God forbid it was in cities where there's riots going on. I don't know what this is. It could be that you're worried about the loyalty to the person you went in on in this business or whatever this is. It kind of has a lot of like do not enter vibes. Even if you're in the thick of it, it's kind of like let sleeping dogs lie. Like don't poke the bear. All these all these kind of like, oh, this is uh, it. It just it doesn't bode well for me as a reader when you already have what seems to be like a really cool offer going on over here some of you feel bad because you you may have invested in your friend's company or there may be like an emotional connection to this one where it was a labor of love but ultimately can you walk away from it knowing you tried your best it's not to say you can't revisit it at another time but the fact that it came up with judgment in the tower this, I don't, I just, I just don't like it, to be honest. I'll pull some more cards on each. But again, it, like your, your spreads, both love and career have to do with ultimately decision making, the new or the past. So give me a, and, and I have to be honest, Scorpio, right now, just me as a reader, both opportunities say new, new, go with the new one. King of Wands. 
Yeah, if you don't, okay, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't take this person up on their opportunity and you don't have to, right? If you choose, this is not the right fit for me. I don't want it. That's fine because there's a king of wands who really wants it and it's going to make their day to get it. But if they don't, if it goes to you, the king of wands is going to be heartbroken. And again, that may have to do with this whole other side of the story is if you take this position in New York, then your king of wands in, I don't know, Texas. Texas is going to be really upset that he doesn't get to see you anymore. And even if this King of Wands isn't romantic, I, I do think there's this guilt or this like, I told them I would do this for them, but I can't. And I don't think you need to feel apologetic if you're putting your best foot forward with good reason. I don't think you're trying to hurt this person. I feel like, unfortunately, it might be sort of in inevitable. Um, this could have been some sort of startup revol involving like a healing profession or... You know, something working with people who are either victims or uh, maybe not that. Uh, almost, yeah, like a spiritual career of sorts. Especially with your King of Wands. I don't know if that makes sense. Aries, Leo, Sag. Uh, I don't know. For others of you, though, you, there's a highly sought after role. It's very competitive. And again, you are first in line to get it. And if you pass up on it, they will quickly fill the role elsewhere. It's, it's, it's between you and the King of Wands. And so maybe you guys know it's at your current place and this is like a, a job title change or something like that. So again, I see you first in line. Oh, it's a divine pairing. Yeah, this offering is a perfect fit for you. Just about. That's how I would read this. I'm not reading this in terms of love. It's a career reading, but, you know, sure, you can. If if the King of Cups is being presented with the job offer, right? She's actually looking at you, which I really like. It's saying this offering that could bring change and movement into career, into, sorry, change and movement to your career and uh, money, money, streams of money, income, it's a perfect pair. It's the king and queen of cups, right? Their elements are the same. They're on the same page. This is a good collaboration or a compatible working relationship. Tell me about this. I Yeah, that one, 3,000% Scorpio, if you want my opinion. Yeah, this just gets worse. Indecision, let's get back together, but I don't really know if I want to. <laughs> yeah, okay, so a lot of you, it's a cycle or a chapter in your life that if you choose to go forward with it, that's fine. It's just delaying the inevitable, which is you're going to see the tower came down for a reason. So again, I don't mean to put doom doomsday over this. Like, obviously, there's some sort of loyalty to someone here or you love them a lot or you were sad to see it go. The tower came down and it's saying... Okay, well, this decision of do we or don't we, picking one, I can't, I want to do both, I want to have my cake and eat it too. Okay, let's reunite, this feels good, this feels awesome, wait a minute, did I make the right decision? Should I have set myself free? No, I don't know what to do. Like, there's just a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. So, if this is a labor of love and no matter what happens, you're going to force it and try and make it work, you know, maybe you'll see some leverage and some movement in the future, but I... This seems like years or just it's it's a lot. It seems exhausting. Moving on. Let's talk about uh, money. Compatibility, sharing cups, two artists collaborating. I see that. <coughs> Sorry, Scorp. What did I not read with? Let's do this one. All right. Last few messages. Money. What's money looking like for Scorpio in December? This feels like relationship readings, even work-wise. You, It seems like you're going to be joining a business. Teamwork. Money. Knight of Pentacles. Again, slow and steady. It's on its way. Enough with the lovers. Maybe it's a Gemini. Some of you are being told to save, for the, save the money for the wedding. Yeah, start saving away money so that you can put it towards the future with your, your hubby or your wifey, whatever. There's a victory. Yeah, how's money looking? Yeah, it's it's going to come in the form of someone else, but it's going to look real good. You guys are meeting on the same level. You're on the same page. You're quite literally headed towards each other. Maybe your next romantic partner is going to be at work. I'm not sure I'd advise that, but I'm not going to deny it. That's what those cards look like. Victory, recognition, promotion, raise, and with that comes money. Slow and steady. Don't, don't throw in the towel yet. All right, Scorp, that's what I got for you. <laughs> Happy December! Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below uh, what resonates, and I will see you guys very soon for more tarot. Bye!